guys, welcome to the Arter server. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to update the BIOS and firmware of a 12th gen Dell PowerEdge server using the lifecycle controller. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, uh, I've shown you guys how to download individual updates from Dell's website and apply them inside a Linux installation uh, manually. That is personally my preferred method, but I know uh, some people would prefer to use the lifecycle controller uh, just because it's a single interface that allows you to apply many updates at once. And so there is a convenience factor there. I'm uh, somewhat of a control freak myself, so I tend to like to do things manually. Um, or at least automated in a fashion that I created versus uh, somebody else's program, but um, that's just a personal preference. And so today I wanna to show you guys how to use the lifecycle controller instead to apply those updates to your server. And another reason why I wanna show you this video is because it doesn't always work the way you expect it. And if you run into problems trying to use the lifecycle controller, I'm gonna show you how to work around those problems. All right, so let's get started. Uh, here I am in the lifecycle controller of a Dell uh, R420. Um, this is pretty much going to be uh, the same interface you'll see for all the 12th gen um, Dell PowerEdge servers. And so you've heard that you can use the lifecycle controller to update the BIOS and firmwares. And the way to do that is by clicking this platform update option here in the menu on the left. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then you get this uh, screen here and we can click on launch platform update. Now, the original instructions on how to do this will tell you that as long as your server is connected to the network, um, you pick the FTP server, click on next, and it'll automatically connect to Dell's FTP server and download the update catalog and figure out what updates are available for your particular server. Um, before you do this, you do have to make sure that you have a working network connection, and I already have done that. Um, but I'll show you what happens when you do this. So go ahead and click on next. And of course, but the default uh, FTP server is ftp.dell.com. And in my case, I'm not using a proxy, so I'll just kind of disable that. And we'll click on next. And this is gonna take a few minutes for the lifecycle controller to uh, reach out to Dell's FTP server, and it'll try to download a couple things. And yeah, here you'll see it's trying to download the catalog. Um, it's performing a variety of steps here. All right, so then you'll usually end up with this error where it says no update is available. So the problem here is that the default setting to use ftp.dell.com is no longer available. Uh, Dell has changed something on their server end, and so you can no longer really use this default FTP server setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on OK. Let's get back up uh, to this screen. Now, if you have, um, if you ran into this and you did some Google searching, you might have come across this, this page here where it says, instead use HTTPS. Um, by picking network share, HTTPS, and then entering downloads.dell.com instead of the ftp.dell.com. Now this does work, but let me show you what happens here. So if I click on network share, following those instructions, and we go to next, you'll see that the only options I have available here are SIFS and NFS. So this is basically a SMB share, NFS. There is no HTTP or HTTPS option here. All right, so entering down, uh, downloads.dell.com is just not going to work. All right, so at this point, you might be a little frustrated because you've tried to do the default FTP update and that didn't work. You're trying to follow instructions to enter downloads.dell.com instead and that option isn't available. All right, so let me just cancel out of this. Let's get out of this. All right, so the reason you might be running in, into all these uh, roadblocks is uh, if you've noticed on the home page of the Dell lifecycle controller here is that this is release 1.0 and this is a very old version of the lifecycle life cycle controller and it does not have that HTTPS option to allow you to use the downloads.dell.com uh, alternative and of course the FTP server is no longer working. So 
the first thing you have to do if you run into a situation like this is to manually update. And I know I told you in the beginning that I'm going to show you how to update all your firmwares and, and BIOS using lifecycle control. But unfortunately, the situation is that in this case, the lifecycle controller is simply too old. And we have to update the lifecycle controller first. And then we can uh, relaunch the lifecycle controller when, once it's updated. And then you'll see that we can enter, uh, we, can, we have the option for HTTPS and we can enter the downloads.dell.com and uh, after that it'll be smooth sailing. So let me go ahead and exit out of this. I'm going to reboot into a Linux uh, installation I have on a USB drive. Uh, while that's happening, all right, let's click on OK. So I'm going to let this server, uh, it should automatically reboot into my Linux uh, USB drive there. But while that is rebooting, I'm going to show you how to find this update. So if you go to support.dell.com, which will redirect you to this uh, place, uh, you can either enter the service tag or serial number and it'll, that's probably the easiest way to do it. But um, if you don't want to do that, you can just click on browse all products. We'll click for servers, power edge servers. This is a rack mount R420 and R420. All right, so this is the server that we're working on right now. Uh, click on drivers and downloads. Um, I'm using CentOS 7, which is essentially RHEL 7. So I'm going to click on that. So I download the package that will work for uh, my OS. And let's just narrow this down a little bit. Let's go down to uh, iDRAC with lifecycle controller. And so here you'll see that this is a version that was released uh, last May in 2019. And it's an urgent download. I think there's some security fixes in this. Um, and you basically just have to click on download and download this file. Now, I've already actually downloaded this file. I just wanted to show you the process of finding this file on Dell's website. And in case you have a hard time with it, you can just follow the, the, the steps I just took to find this uh, file. So once you click on download, uh, you can basically upload that to your operating system and apply this update manually, which is what I'm going to show you in a moment here as the server boots up. All right. So anyway, assuming that you've already downloaded that and put it on your uh, operating system uh, file system, we'll just uh, give this operating system a few minutes to boot up here. All right, we're booted up here. Let me go ahead and log in. And I do need to write, run these updates as roots, so I'm gonna escalate my privileges. And I, like I said, I've already downloaded the uh, lifecycle controller update here. So that's this is the file that we just saw earlier on Dell's website. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. So normally when you just run this uh, without any options, it's going to uh, prompt you to say, well, you know, do you really want to do this? Um, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to do a dash Q, which normally um, for most Dell update uh, scripts or uh, packages that will basically bypass that prompt. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so it looks like the iDRAC rebooted, so we got disconnected. Um, that's okay, not a problem, we'll just reconnect. All right, we'll click on launch to get the virtual console back up. All right, let me just Switch that a little bit. Okay, so the update looks like it completed successfully. Let's go ahead 
And now you could manually uh, uh, apply all the other updates uh, like I did with the iTrack, but we're going to use the lifecycle controller for the uh, rest of the updates. So let's go ahead and reboot and get back into the lifecycle controller and hopefully we're going to see the new version of that. Okay, so at this point we're going to press F10 and you'll see that it says entering lifecycle controller. We'll let the post finish and we should be back in the lifecycle controller. Alright, so here is the new lifecycle controller. We'll click on next with the default options here. Um, looks like it wants to explain a lot of things to me, but I'm just going to keep going. And we're going to pick the first NIC. DHCP is fine, so I can get an address. And so this is just setting up the network so that the lifecycle controller has access to the network. All right, connectivity status up, so that's good. All right, so you'll notice that this interface now looks a little bit different. It's more or less the same, but it has a few cosmetic changes. It's no longer version 1.0. And we can click on get latest firmware right here, or we can click it right here. It's basically the same thing. So let's go ahead and do that. And this time we're gonna click on network share because we know the FTP doesn't work. And you'll notice that it even mentions that HTTP or HTTPS server uh, is under this option. So we'll click next. We'll click on HTTPS. And here is where we're going to uh, enter downloads.dell.com. And that's all we need. All right, so it's going to say that the certificate is invalid. Um, go ahead and just click continue here. I think it's maybe because it's self-signed or something. I'm not really sure why that's, uh, it doesn't really give you a reason here, does it? Either it's expired or not valid for a specified server name. Dell should really fix that. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes here for it to um, do the download and it's going to figure out what uh, updates this server needs. All right, so it's figured out all the updates that I require on the server and you'll see that it automatically selects um, ones where there's a relevant update. So you'll see this is the current uh, version that's on the server and this is the latest update that's available. So normally uh, you can just click on apply and it'll start applying these updates, but I like to look through this list just to make sure that everything looks all right. And in addition to that, sometimes there are power supply um, firmware updates. I don't really recommend doing those um, because they tend to be problematic and oftentimes they can brick your uh, power supply. So I tend not to uh, do those um, just to avoid that problem. There are people who say that it does uh, work, the power supply firmware updates, but then there are people who follow the procedure and it didn't work and you basically end up killing your power supply. So I don't know what the cost benefit analysis is in terms of you know how important those updates are. But anyway, I tend to just avoid the power supply updates. All right, so it's pretty much detected everything that needs updating on the server. I'm going to go ahead and click apply now, and it's going to take a while. This is going to take at least 30 minutes, uh, especially with this many updates or longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. I'm gonna let this run and uh, continue recording, but I'll probably fast forward through all that until this is completely done and then um, come back to the video.
All right, so it looks like the lifecycle control has finished doing all the updates. All right, so we see the BIOS version is now 2.70. So that was one point something, a really old version uh, at first. And if we go to system inventory, I'm hoping that will show all the latest firmware versions. Okay, let's go to firmware inventory. Yep, so you can see these are all the latest versions. Um, yeah, even the H710 Mini uh, was an older version. If you go back in to the uh, earlier part of the video, you'll see that that was an older version. All right, so uh, that's it. We've got the um, all the firmwares and BIOS updated through the lifecycle controller. Now, something that was kind of strange is that after this update, for some reason, I can't select a network card anymore, so I don't have a network connection. I'm not really sure why that is. If anybody knows, uh, leave me a comment in this video to uh, let me know what that's about. Um, otherwise, I'll have to go do some searching to see why the NIC is no longer available in the lifecycle controller. That's really kind of weird. But uh, anyway, the purpose of this video is to show you how to get the lifecycle controller to update all the firmwares uh, in BIOS, and we've accomplished that. Um, if you run into some of the problems I showed you earlier in this video, um, you know now you know to work around it. Basically, uh, you know the two main points is that the ftp.dell.com um, server is no longer available, so use the downloads.dell.com uh, with HTTPS instead. And if you don't have the HTTPS option um, for under the launch firmware update, it's probably because your version of the lifecycle controller is too old. And so go ahead and just download the lifecycle controller update manually and apply that manually and then get back into the lifecycle controller. All right, so hopefully you guys find this helpful for anybody who wants to uh, update their system BIOS and firmware uh, using the lifecycle controller and you're having some problems. I hope this video um, will help you out. Uh, give me a like if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to see more videos from me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.